All right, welcome to Your Coach, Your Money, where we aim to educate and motivate our young professional athletes to do great things with their lives. We have a special guest with us today. His name is Drew Smith, formerly of the Buffalo Bills. Very excited. (laughs) Buffalo in the house. Next year is your year, right? Next year is your year. We have have a great guest then because he was a great dane a great dane that's right well i mean it's oh it's been buffalo's year since 1987 (laughs) when the giants beat them in the super bowl and norwood pushed it wide right you know it was an 88 i can't remember tom brady roast didn't go too well (laughs) (laughs) we won't we won't get into that but (laughs) so i'll give you some background on drew drew's a local guy he played at u albany i got some great stats for you he finished the uh his career as the program's all-time leader for touchdowns 45 touchdowns and all-time rushing touchdowns of 40. uh he accrued over 3196 yards at his time at u albany And he carried the ball 195 times and rushed for 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns his senior year. I think which was was just impressive was there was all-purpose yards there, too. All-purpose yards. The all-purpose yards. But one thing, we can't can't forget to, you know, say thank you to his offensive linemen. Because without (laughs) those offensive linemen in front of him blocking, he would not have been as successful. Um, Drew currently is Weren't you at Syracuse? Like, you, you weren't even on the... What did I the want? team with him? You were like, no, he was a great I, dad. It's a whole different I conference. Man. <laughs> that <might be> 2, <laughs> he, would, he would love for me to smash into people for him. Oh, without a doubt. Um, <laughs> uh, Drew did play for the Buffalo Bills for, for a very long period of time. In, in the NFL world, it was a long period of time. And uh, <laughs> trust me, it insane. takes a toll on you. He yeah. does live locally with his wife, China and his two children, Maverick and Marley. Yes. And currently works at Metabolic and beats up my wife every morning. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Yes, Drew. <laughs> Man, I love you so much. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to just kick us off and just give Drew a great intro. And I'm going to throw a nice, easy question at you first, man. What was it like when you were when you were playing back in 2013, right? Yeah, yeah, 2013. You got it. Um, well, number one, I haven't heard those numbers in, <laughs> in a while. Um, yeah, man, uh, it was it was unique. Um, obviously, everyone's experience is different. Um, everybody goes through a different experience. Everyone has a different upbringing different system, uh, different everything, coaches. But um, I like to say, I think the transition for me um, was, number one, speed of the game. Oh, my God. Uh, that was pretty wild. I remember, like, like U Albany, a little bit different than the SEC. <laughs> uh, obviously, I got a shot because, number one, I ran for a lot of touchdowns. Yep. That's number one. I was pretty big, and at my pro day, I ran a 4 5 3. And That's that was like, that's I, really I, fast. I got past the line. I looked at the guy like, what'd you wow. just say? Like, <laughs> okay, I get it. Um, but uh, I think the speed of it, I remember my rookie mini camp because the number one traffic that year was EJ Manuel. Oh, um, yeah. And then um, uh, Robert Woods was the second one. Kiko Alonso, Marquise Goodwin were like the first four they did. And Marquise Goodwin was trying out for the Olympics at the same time. Yep. He ran like a 4 2 or something. Uh, Kiko was a psycho from Oregon. Oh, my God. <laughs> and like just. A, a, You're name dropping everyone on everyone's fantasy football right? rosters. I know. That's what I'm trying to get. From 2013 to 2020 or so. Okay. Bingo, right there. And then, um, and then Robert Woods, I remember he was like, I've never seen anybody run routes like at my level, like as clean, as crisp, as fast, to the point where you're just like, okay, I get why. You could almost tell. Right. What the body's not yeah. the body's not there. supposed to move like that at that yeah, speed. Yeah, I was right? like, that, that guy's a top four, right? He's got to be in the first four rounds. Got to um. So the transition yeah. definitely was speed from there. Um, physicality was another instance because I switched my position. Yeah, I was a running back. At the time when I got the call, they were like, "Hey, you down to play fullback?" And at the time, the Saints were still like an undrafted kind of thing. They were like, "Hey, do you wanna?" Like, or, but they was like, it was like, oh, all text. It wasn't Phil, but they Bills called me, and I was like, "Yes, sure, whatever." <laughs> I'll New York, let's in, go. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly, but. Obviously, the transition from running back to fullback changed things for me. Yeah. It was a lot more physicality um, in terms of just rim blocking. That was right. one thing I had to right. get used to. And Learning also, how to block. So what's a rim block? It's, oh, when, yeah, a, it's when a running back <laughs> has to come from the backfield position and block someone at the last man in the line of scrimmage or a linebacker, a blitzing threat, right? It's a suicide mission it's, pretty it's much. A tough, it's like, it's a and, and they leave him alone. And you. the whole point is, like, you don't have to – Clean his clock. Just don't just much. Don't miss. Bingo. Don't, and just don't, be a don't barricade. Miss. <laughs> um, so that was a big thing from there. Uh, play get, playbook was much more intricate. That wasn't too crazy. But I think the lifestyle and just understanding more or less what's expected now and how it's right. now a job. And now it's a job. It's, it's a job. Yeah. yeah. And um, the little things they like lay out like, hey, uh, every pound you're over your weight is a thousand dollar fine. Like for example, like so for if they point. want you at like two forty. You come in at two forty three, like yo, it's that's it's three thousand right there, like or your iPad, you need your iPad at all times. Your iPad's not there, like that's or you lose it ten thousand dollars. You know, yeah. make sure you have it on you all the time. Um, nutrition, um, early mornings, the meetings. Um, yeah, like yeah, you obviously have access to way more than yeah. 
you've ever had at you Albany. Well, but I mean, it's it's good that you kind of shine light on that because yeah. a lot of athletes that come from college now they have a much greater experience because yes. of the money, yeah. mm-hmm. because of NIL. Yep. And, well, you see the differences in college. I know when we uh, took a trip to Syracuse, yes, you know, we went into their cafeteria area. Oh yeah. my God, yes, and, that you was know, crazy. and it was unbelievable. The food, you know everything I mean? was fresh. Everything was whole foods. Everything was like it was like literally the top of the line stuff. Yeah, it, 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 so, the access, it's crazy. like the, the facilities, the food, even like. Yeah. I could grab a Pedialyte anytime I wanted. <laughs> and I remember that. Yeah, and that's make... different than Hudson Valley Community College, yeah, right. where your budget <laughs> isn't. <laughs> right, exactly. you, you can have tap water. That's yeah. what we have here. <laughs> we, have tap, we have tap water. Like you're literally this Pedialyte thing's like eight dollars a pop. I just I remember just take it and mix it with Gatorade and water and do my whole cocktail. But um, um, yeah, that was that was a big part of it, man. So you know, as as you kind of you know realized, you know, you got to Buffalo, you're surrounded by pros. Mm-hmm. What was what was like almost that starstruck moment where you were in the locker room? Because I know mine. I I know what mine was, but what was yours? Did, did you have that moment where you're like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm really here? Yeah, uh, man. There's one that came later, um, which is crazy. And so the first one that pops in my head, and it was, it's just me. Uh, Matt Liner was like, they signed him last, like, second towards the end of, like, training camp. And I remember, like, I'm like, yo, this is Matt Liner. This is Reggie Bush. This is USC. This is USC. And, uh, really quiet dude. But I remember my first time I caught, like, a pass from him in scrimmage. And I was like, yo, I just caught a pass from, like, Matt <laughs> Liner, like the Trojan. So that that was pretty uh, big for me. Um, obviously, there's some vets. Like, um, uh, Stevie Johnson was one that I used to watch all the time. He yep. would just skateboard everywhere and just uh, do his thing from there. But um, And my running backs coach was uh, Tyrone Wheatley. Oh, so, T Dub, I love bingo. it. He was he was awesome. Uh, Tyrone Wheatley was the running backs coach, and uh, also CJ Spiller was their guy. So that was another guy in college that I was like, man, this guy he was so fast. So I think Coach Wheatley and CJ Spiller like, every day meeting with them, uh, catching a pass from Matt Liner. It's amazing. Uh, and then when uh, when preseason, I remember when we um we played against uh, two guys, Calvin Johnson and Adrian Peterson. And Calvin Johnson didn't even play at the time, but he was just around, and he looked like he was six seven, Megatron, just, just absolutely uh, huge. And the and then uh, Adrian Peterson, I remember watching him make one run where he basically like stiff on like three four people, hopped over another dude, and I was like, those two guys, I just remember that was probably the one thing. But yeah, the Matt Liner one, man, I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> See, everyone's got that one. Yeah, yeah. It is, but man. you know it something is. that I think you know some of our younger listeners, I'm I'm talking you know pre college listeners yeah. mm-hmm. might be interested in, and a lot of times we focus on you know the NFL part which most people will never get to that level yeah 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 right mm-hmm. but like what was your what was your routine and what was your thought like coming out of high school and, oh. and, and picking a college <clears throat> and 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 how did your training maybe evolve from that to like college and then into into the NFL uh, honestly like high school I never moved up in high school football mm-hmm. I just got there as a junior certain things didn't work out the way mm-hmm. I planned to a point where like I was on the fence about even playing football to be honest I oh wow. coach I was walking like I was about to be in my junior year of uh, high school at Gillen, and like I'm walking back and I'm like, yo, I'm not starting on either side of the ball right now. Like, what am I doing? I love basketball, and my coach telling me, I think you can play Division three football if you put it to him. And I was like, yo, you're lying to me. Like, I can play college football, or whatever. And I think I got like two inches taller, and I went to a Mohan scrimmage. I remember it was a Mohan scrimmage, and by the end of the Mohan scrimmage, I was a safety too, and they were like. Like, who the hell is this guy? Like, what's going on? Like, and my coach was like, oh, that's our guy. He's like, why is he on the field at all times? And then the next week, sure enough, I was starting on defense as a safety. And I saw the offensive side never really clicked with me yet. I didn't really get a shot at it. And then my senior year, when they finally gave me the reins, I was a quarterback. And I committed to Albany as a quarterback. Uh, the first ever full scholarship they gave for Coach Ford being like, hey, why don't you play quarterback, son? But UNH had offered me for safety. And I remember my god brother, who, like, he played at Northeastern receiver. He was like, you're a safety, like you're, I swear you're a safety, or an outside linebacker. My offensive coordinator at college still tells me you were an ACC linebacker. Like I'm happy you're here, but like yeah. that's what you should have played. But it, unfortunately, and you may know this, upstate football in New York is not the same as Atlanta, Georgia, it's or not the same as Pennsylvania, Tech, or, or, or Ohio, California, Jersey. Yeah. So I kind of had to figure out things on myself and mm-hmm. like kind of get into it and watching other guys from those different places, uh, like. Or one quarterback was from New Jersey, and I watched him, like, with his supplements and, like, his vitamins in the locker and, like, going through that stuff. Uh, to another guy from Georgia, he played a big, big-time school in Atlanta, Georgia. Like, it was almost like Division One football there. It's where he came up here, he had a bad injury, he came up here, and he's like, man, this is wacko. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, I got Georgia, to Georgia high school football versus college football in New York. Like Bingo. Georgia, Georgia high school football is probably a little better. It, you know, it's, it. it's crazy. It's that crazy. Whole magnitude. So, like, honestly, I picked it up. As I went, because I didn't really have anybody on my team or on my roster in high school that kind of went through that. And then 
summer after summer, like strength and conditioning coach, kind of getting me ready, like going through things. But a lot of it was just pick up on the fly because I never really had. And my parents are also, they're from born and raised in Jamaica. So, like, they didn't grow up here. They only got into football when they saw, like, I got better at it. And I really didn't know. My dad, I'm first generation, like, college athlete, which right. now I can take this for my son. And be like, yo, this is what the, <laughs> yeah. stop, like, messing around. Like, you gotta do this. But um, a lot of it was just picking on the fly, man, to be honest, from there. So, um, talk to me a little bit about, because it's, it's, it's a hard transition. You know, you, you made your dreams come true, made mm-hmm. it to Buffalo, yeah. and then um, it ended. Yeah, right, uh, and and that's always the hardest part that guys are not ready for, nope. right? Nope, nope, it, it nope. Is <laughs> your whole your whole college career? I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna make money. I'm gonna enjoy this, and then and then it, then it doesn't happen. Yeah. So talk to me about that transition. Uh, well, you're right. It's it's crazy. The point where you're like, I got, it was injury. I tore my thumb against the um the Lions. Almost collateral ligament. So it was my my dominant thumb. Can't catch like passing. I had a, I had a club the last game against the Lions, and it was like rough, but. Uh, then it's just like, boom, it kind of was like college too. Cause like with your boys, like it was gonna last forever. Then it's like done. And it's so abrupt. And then you're thinking, Hey, all right, I'll just stay in shape and maybe get a look here with the bucks or like a look here with the chiefs. And like, you recognize like, Hey man, like you might not get that call. And now it's time to somewhat think about what am I going to do? So I was a, I was very fortunate in terms of my transition because I just kept contacts with some of my old like training guys, like now Matt Phelps, who runs the metabolic. When he first started his thing, I was 16 years old, just working on the athlete, so I had that relationship, and like I still kept it. And then he just happened to have this great idea, getting from the ground floor, and I got there at the ground floor, so it was great. I can't say that for a lot of guys, because it's, I always say I'm so thankful that happened, because now I transition to my new life that I can sustain, but some guys, man, I had a college degree too, and, and um, and informatics and computing so the computer science thing was another route i was thinking up but like i had that and at the time i didn't really think much about it but i don't use any of that stuff i got from college but the fact that i kept relationships with certain people and i kind of transitioned not to mention like even having that brand of being like you played in the nfl made my profession like cooler it's a great party yeah. trick <laughs> like, now that. were you it's married during party. that time nope not married okay. at all never met my wife just uh just transitioned into it and i got very lucky but in terms of the football thing it's it's, it's kind of hard to just it it happens so fast and if you're not prepared for it it right. doesn't work out and some of my other friends like it didn't work out very well for me i can speak on it my backup running back who from Don Bosco, um, he was really good. It made me a little nervous when I saw him here at college. Hmm. Like he's no longer with us anymore, and he just got yeah. down bad from like old habits with like certain painkillers and stuff. And mm-hmm. life hit him, and now he's no longer with us, unfortunately. And uh, that that sucks. And there's tons of stories like that of guys yeah, like, mentally. It happens. Just, it happens a lot. And yeah. you know, the 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 drug epidemic is real. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I mean. Performance enhancing drugs are real. People use them every day, mm-hmm. and then and then recreational drugs are real. People use them every day, and, and you know in, in right. NFL locker rooms, it, it's it's tough because you're 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 put at a precipice. I have to recover, I have to improve, mm-hmm. I have to stay relevant and stay good. How do I keep that edge, yep. right? And and barring being in a facility for eighteen hours a day, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Because that's what it sometimes takes. Yep. Sometimes you need an advantage, and and but that's where those bad habits form. Terrible, it's right? terrible habits. Yep. So you know, it's just it's one of those things where I wanted to shine light for athletes out there because it's not always going to work out. No, it's, it's not, not always going to be easy, right? No. And that adversity is kind of what helps us overcome but th- that's what makes us who we are and yep. that abrupt stop at the end right in the world of finance is not good because you get oh man you, know, you think the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> oh, like the money's always going to be there yeah yeah so you build your lifestyle well, around that and then all of a sudden it's like i was just watching i was just reading an article antonio brown just filed bankruptcy oh yeah. really he just filed bankruptcy and oh. i'm like you know you got <laughs> listen but we had when david tyree came on david talked about you know when he was playing a guy in a suit looked very reputable came up to him gave him ideas but then kind of the rug just got kind of pulled out. Oh. And it's like this is where you, you said it perfect, Drew. You had relationships with Mark Phelps. Or is it Matt, Matt, Matt Phelps, <laughs> I apologize. You had a relationship with Matt Phelps where, you know, you could trust he was going to take you to the right place. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, exactly. and it happens a lot with athletes across the board, not just NFL, right? MLB and basketball and hockey, where they just meet the wrong person. Ter- yep. and they, yeah. don't have that, they don't have the experience to vet. How do I vet someone? Well, and that can How just be the the, right? the normal person through their their life they're, yeah, of investing. Their life it doesn't have yeah. to be an athlete. It could be you know mm-hmm. you, you meet the wrong person. It's 
you know, somebody at the bank that maybe isn't fully licensed or, you know, I'm not saying that bank people aren't fully licensed. No, but, but yeah, but how do I you know, know, right? Yeah, exactly. So when you were, when you were a rookie, did, did, there, was there, cause I know for me, when I was a rookie, there was no financial education. There no. was no training. Um, we didn't even get to talk with anybody. You know, I don't know what your experience was it like. It was there. at that time, it was a little bit more known, uh, like 2013. Like there was, I think 30 for 30 just came out with that broke documentary, like yep. maybe a year. So they made us all watch that. They had guys come in, but some of these other guys, they're just vultures who are just like waiting for right. a good time to like get you in a room alone right. and then kind of talk about it or not get you in a room alone, but like get you to get your homeboy yeah, <laughs> get right. in a room alone on the yeah. same roster. So they're around everywhere. I was also lucky. Fred Jackson was like coming to the end, a vet who like knew everything, who kind of like would educate some of us younger guys about things and be like, yo, watch out for this, watch out for that. The vets are great for that. And like they're supposed to be, they're well established. The other problem is, like, if you're not, like you said, if you're not consistent, if you're not relevant, there's this guy right here who, like, can't wait for you to, like, get hurt yep. and come yeah. in. They're just waiting yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. and, like, uh, yeah. He's like, yo, I hope this guy's late for a meeting. I hope this guy, like, yep. can't bench as much as he has because he's just, like, and then the next year, here comes another, another guy. Yep. Comes another guy. Yep. Hungry. So well, Brady, Brady was on the bench behind Bledsoe. Yeah. Oh, I mean, my God, yes. You know, he sat there for years, I mean, a year and a half behind Bledsoe mm -hmm. until Bledsoe got knocked out, and then yep. he and, had a shot. And it's a business now. This isn't like you're here for this whole year. Like, you could leave every day. I remember the guy who would make the cuts. They called him the Grim Reaper. We had, we he, had the Turk. We had the Turk. That the was his Turk. name. The Turk. When he came in the room, man, oh, like, we roll up, man. Bring your playbook. Oh, he, he, I remember I called one guy. I was like, hey, man, I need to see you for a second. And everybody was like, and Nathaniel Hackett was our offensive coordinator, too, at the time. And he was, like, going through a play. And then. The guy left the room, and everybody was just like, "Damn, like, yo, he, we ain't gonna see him no more." It is, it yeah. is probably one of the more stressful experiences I remember personally. Where every day you walked to work, you didn't know if you were gonna have a nope. job. Yep, locker. The guy locked you. The guy who was with you. So it's right a lot like being self-employed. It's a lot like being self-employed. Yes, exactly. It's great. <laughs> yep, his locker's cleaned out. You're like, oh, he's gone. Like, it, but but in the, in the, at least in this world, I know if I don't do anything stupid, I yes. should be okay. <laughs> exactly. You know, sure. like, in that world, you don't have to do anything, and no. it's like, yeah, we Nothing. needed it. We needed a kicker. We needed to release you. Yep. Right, and that's that's how it went. Well, this guy's really available, did. and that, that's really what it is. But yeah. the, the finance part, man, that's it. It's just if they really tell you, hey, don't. Don't, this isn't coming forever. No matter how long yeah. you play in this league, it's not coming forever. So right now, your lifestyle, your habits right now need to be tamp tapered a lot no matter how much because if you keep living that life, even like Mario Williams at the time, like, I think it was like a second $100 million contract, but like some of some of his purchases, I'd always be like, man, like he just did like, how do you even <laughs> go from that? Like, it's not going to yeah. last forever. And most of these guys, they don't, they think it's going to keep coming forever and then it's not. And then they do things like file for it. Bankruptcy. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately. you know, I know Mark's, we got, you, know, I was, you got a couple questions yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for him. I'm not sure, Mark, but I mean, I know that personally, as I watch guys attrition, you know, it, it's always, it's always eye opening to, to see guys who make these millions of dollars mm -hmm. and they just don't have a plan. No, right. You know, and frivolous I, spending. It, you know, the not coming on forever and not having this income forever, but you get your lifestyle yes, right up lifestyle, here, uh -huh. where my bills monthly are seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars, <laughs> yeah. right? Which it could be, which is fine. And that, <laughs> but then the it. income on the other side of the equation turns off. Yep. Yeah, and I don't have that income anymore. It's crazy, you know. Um, and that only leads to bad things at that point. Well, yeah, because now you're leveraging and now you're selling yeah. assets to, to pay, you're borrowing from Peter to pay yeah. Paul, yeah. right? So, Drew, for a younger athlete that's that's, that's in college right now, um, obviously, you know, NIL has become real. Mark, yeah. Mark has really given me a, a great advantage because we're trying to educate people on NIL. Um, you know, what would you say to a college athlete right now that is receiving money, which a lot of D1 athletes are receiving mm -hmm. a quarterly or a monthly paycheck? Yeah. Now, if you're a high-end athlete, you're receiving a significant amount of money. So what would you say to that athlete that's receiving money? What would you tell them? Because uh, NIL wasn't real when we were there. It wasn't If you all. took money from a booster, you were getting you were in getting trouble. your whole team in trouble. Anything. They vacate all the wins, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, I had to give Reggie his thing back because now it's just a of lot less. Um, but um, uh, I, if I say this, I know these <laughs> kids are going to be like, uh, just keep it. Like, <laughs> put it away. Don't give away your and money. try not to just not touch it. Like, you're going to use that eventually. If you had to do anything, like, I think property is something that always tends to not at least appreciate as much. <laughs> but, like, I just keep it and, and have it. Because right when you're at school, they give you all the clothes. 
They do your laundry. Uh, they probably give you meals, everything, like, for free. The books, everything. So you could just, like, not touch that. <laughs> That'd be great. It sounds crazy in that because everybody wants to buy a Hellcat. Everybody wants to buy, like, a G-Wagon. And those guys at those big levels, man, like, even, like, or some like the eighth guy on like a basketball team and a big team still get like 300 a year like yeah. just to be there so if, if you could my advice is just the money they give you nil <laughs> just try not to touch it just literally yeah. tell them to touch just put it somewhere i don't i don't know and i'd like to say give it to someone you trust I, yeah well i think you know I, I think we talk about a lot on other episodes it's this idea of delayed gratification mm-hmm. yeah you know it's like it's I like know. You, know, you want it now why do you exercise and train so much to get to the level that you get to right mm-hmm. it's because you know at the end it's going to pay off yeah. but it's no different than finance why do you like not buy the brand new car why do you not buy the the flashy thing right now because you know saving it yeah. will pay off later and you can get all those things and delay your gratification but get everything you wanted later if you Thank do it right right I want it now but kids don't see that right because nope, it's the don't. it's the I need it now generation mm-hmm. it's the I need to be on well, social media I need to I, have this and I think just... a great a great point to what you said was if if I do let's say I make a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars a year in NIL I got to first account for the fact that I'm probably going to have to pay some taxes. Yes. I'm, pro- no, pro- I'm probably going to pay some taxes. And, about taxes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Uncle Sam, I'll, you know, it's funny. I heard this great quote, right? I wake up early on Monday. I, I work late on Tuesday. I don't get to see my kids on Wednesday. And, and through the course of the week, Uncle Sam's not there. But then on Friday, yep. when payday um, comes, un- Uncle Sam is there. Right? He, he's there. He's waiting for you. Um, only two certainties. The other right. famous quote, death, death and taxes. Taxes. <laughs> taxes. Taxes, 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 taxes. the other thing. Just taxes are massive. That is not all your money. Trust me. It says 200. Like, expect them to take, man, I don't even, damn, damn near half if you want to over-exaggerate. But, yeah, taxes. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's great. another advice there. But. So um, talk to talk to our listeners a little bit about what you currently do yeah. um, and, 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 and how you market yourself now in your current profession. Yeah, so um, I guess uh, I, I don't even have, like, a significant actual concrete title. Uh, basically what happened Sensei? Is, His name yeah, is Sensei. I, I guess. That's it. Um, pretty much, like, 10 years ago after I was done playing, I uh, my friend, my boss, uh, my my mentor, he was starting this thing called Metabog, which had like a hundred people at the time in like this diner over in Broadway off of like Mechanicville. <laughs> and uh, obviously the, the idea was great and I kind of had to see it through. And now we have 12 locations across the state. Um, Huge. About 4,000 total members from where that was. And I was just basically the first uh, full-time employee at the time when wow. he was just trying to start it off and he needed someone to just do it like not mess up because he's a control freak and he wants to make sure he has hit everything. Great so, business owner sounds like and, Matt sounds like a great business owner. That's that's what I realized. Like, well, he has to be like that to make something happen. And he just basically needed a body of someone to kind of just be an extension of himself. And I I taught a good class so that he could focus on the rest of it. And obviously now it's kind of panned out very yeah. well. Um, and I just attached myself to him. And uh, now we're doing our thing. And I'm, I bounce to different locations now. But if I had to give you what it is, forty five minutes group training, strength at a pace. Boom. And, they're, and who does it suit, Drew? How, uh, oh, okay, man. first, let's do three things, right? First of all, what is metabolic? How does it help me? Right? Yeah. As a, as a, do I have to be a certain age? No. How does it help me? Uh, so I like to put it this way. Number one, it, the demographic can be anything. It could be you're uh, 15 years old, trying to get stronger. It could be you're 66, 65, trying to just maintain mobility. Um, we have a certain strength criteria, a certain program that is consistent in our training blocks. And it's all about... You can make it however you want to do. For most people, it's going to be uh, put on muscle and shed weight, body fat. That's a big thing. Right? For some other people, we have a lot of mobility involved in there to mm-hmm. just kind of extend those years, hips, you know, back, all that stuff. Uh, some people, it's just about performance, and they just want to get stronger in terms of athlete standpoint. What I loved most about it when I first started, because um, I think at first when we started, it was like it was like all women. Right. That's how it first started. We had we uh, had a lot, a lot of moms. Yes, a lot, a lot, lot of moms that wanted to get after it and get stronger, mm, which is great. Much. Which is great. And uh, Matt said his biggest thing that he did change off was I'm going to train them like athletes. Yep. And I like that part of it. So I'm going this. I remember we wanted more men. So to market, he's like, "Hey, you're going to do this three times a week." And I was like, "Like hell, I am. Like, I'm going to die out here." But sure enough, we did it three times a week, and then more men started coming in. More men started coming in. To now, where it's like. 
close to like a 60, 65, 35, 40 split now in terms of that. But yeah. it, it's basically, you go at your pace. We show you the workout. You don't have to think, but we basically and take you through it. Listening to Drew's voice, I, I think he might yeah, be right? I mean, <laughs> yelling a little bit. I think he might be getting excited. He's got that like drill going. sergeant type. It's very yeah, raspy. Yeah, like no, even no, when he talks, there. I'm just kind of like, I kind of We're still doing some of you. You know what I mean? I know we have microphones um, now, but back at the time we didn't. So I was just, rah, <laughs> Where, where, and where do we, and how do people sign up and how do they find you guys? Um, okay. So, uh, we are metabolic.com is pretty much where you go. You can find anything. My own Instagram is going to be MM underscore drew. Uh, and there you'll see the link to all the different stuff. But if you just type in metabolic fitness, most likely at Google, you'll find it, uh, right on the homepage, free trial, free workout, come in, try it out, see if you like it. And then we go from there. But I, I know like, the line is it'll be your Last first workout ever. <laughs> it's just here, guys. So just get to the doors. We'll do all the work. You the, just get up and show up. And community. <laughs> the one that, I'm the gonna thing. I'm gonna add on there. The one yes. thing I love about metabolic, and and I don't go there. I don't work out there. It's <laughs> it's my wife goes there. That's her thing. I, I love that she goes there. But they have metabolic socials. We yep. have we have a great time. It's very community based. Bingo. They do the pancakes breakfast on Saturday. I love that. It's yeah. very fun. Um, and, and and really, they have their whole line of gear. They have mm -hmm. like sweatshirts and hats. Yeah. Drew's got the hat on, right? right there, yep. Hopefully, he brought a tent size sweatshirt for me <laughs> that I'm gonna put on later. Oh, I'll get you. Um, I'll get you. Don't worry. About but that. Uh, you know, yeah. we want to make sure that our listeners know there there's an opportunity out there in the local mm -hmm. area uh, and across the state of New York for you to sign up and and get stronger, get back in better shape. So Bingo. that's it. It's all just being better. We're not out here if you want to try to break records great but for the most part it's just about being fit and just working out for a lot of us including myself now i'm in my mid-30s as a dad like you never really find time you're thinking what to do there just walk through the doors we got you covered get your 45 minute workout Bingo. that's it we thank you for listening today we hope you liked what we talked about if you do make sure you please subscribe to our uh, our podcast we hope uh, you enjoyed everything you can find us at 43 british american boulevard latham new york 12110 you can also uh, call us. We have Matt Byers behind the scenes waiting for your call. 844-444-YTYM. You can also find us at yourtimeyourmoney.net for your net worth. We thank you again for coming in today, Drew, and uh, we appreciate everything. No problem. It's Pleasure to have you. Yeah. Pleasure to have you. <laughs> <to be> <laughs> and as always, it's your coach and your money.